Welcome to Cash Grab, the podcast in which we analyse film franchises that have been turned into games or vice versa and decide, are they cash grabs or are they not? My name is fucking Tom. I am with Steph the Beautiful and Adam the Wise. And this is episode nine, Gremlins. Well, that was uh, quite the take on the usual intro. Yeah. But, um, oh, I quite enjoyed it. I think yeah, it yeah, f- fair good. play to you. Thank you. But it took more, bloody more long than, enough. God I tell you yeah, I've, yeah, I've yeah, got yeah. tears at the corners of my eyes. Lucky, lucky for the listener, they don't have to listen to two and a half minutes of you crying with laughter. <laughs> <laughs> Over nothing. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. But we got there in the end. And that's what counts. We're here now. And welcome to the podcast. And thanks for listening. Yeah. Gremlins. Bloody gremlins. Yeah. <laughs> this is Travis right in there. <laughs> yeah. Had you really said that we're doing gremlins? Yeah, I did. Did you? It was, uh, in, I, it I, was I, in his own intro speech. It was, <laughs> was it? Have, and this is gremlins. I should have I should have kind of teased it a bit. Yeah, you but, should have teased it. But <coughs> they know now, and the secret's out. <laughs> well, to be the fair, they, they, the know, they know when they get the episode, because it says <coughs> yeah, episode nine it's gremlins. It's got a fucking picture on it with a gremlin on it. <laughs> most like, I wonder what this could fucking be. Yeah, it's called gremlins, but... It's fucking Kevin McAllister. So it's Gremlins. It is Gremlins. Is Gremlins. Had, have you two seen Gremlins before? Do you know, I, I'm i pretty sure I have, but so long ago that I genuinely remember absolutely nothing. You know what? It's one of those movies where I think everyone has seen it at some point in their life, and a lot of people have seen it when they're younger and mm-hmm. don't remember. Yeah. That I, Sorry, that came out really badly. And don't... I meant to say, remember it. So yes. yeah, so I think I think everyone it's one of those films. It's, it is like Home Alone or like The Goonies or something like that. It's those like classic eighties film. Everyone's seen it, yeah. whether they remember it or not. You've seen it. Yeah. So, so you have seen, you seen it, you Steph? Have seen it. <laughs> yeah, I've seen. Yeah, I've seen both yeah. of them. Yeah. Recently exactly. or no? No, just ages ago. Long time ago. Yeah. Likewise. You were saying it's a Christmas movie, like on all the time at Christmas. That was what Tom was saying. Oh, but yeah. then me and you agreed that we don't consider it a Christmas film. No. I do. I really do. But the thing is, it's, it's like so I have say... have you watched it recently at Christmas? No. So why do you consider it a Christmas movie? Because, like, when I was growing up, I, I've got two older brothers. So, like, you know, they, they were children of the 80s, where I was a child of the 90s. But when I was growing up, every Christmas they put gremlins on. We had gremlins. Um, not, not like in general. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I mean the movie. We had so, six <laughs> so mogwai. We, we, we had, yeah, we had an invasion of gremlins. A few mogwai. But, um... No, so, like, I remember at Christmas time, we'd always have gremlins on. That would always be a thing for Christmas, like, when, when my brothers were still at home and they were, like, younger and stuff. And we'd also always have Goonies on as well. So Goonies is something I sort of associate with Christmas, but not to the same extent. Because at, at least Gremlins is... Uh, Based around Christmas. Yeah, it's during Christmas time, whereas Goonies is... Not. <laughs> no, not, not, <laughs> no, not particularly. Not particularly, yeah. So yeah. I, I consider it a Christmas film. But that's obviously what I've got based in childhood. Yeah. yeah so enough. it's not it's not necessarily a Christmas film. Yeah. But it is, because it's, it's... We all have that one film Christmas. that we watch over Christmas that's yeah. not a Christmas film, but we consider it a Christmas film. What was your one, Steph? Small Soldiers. Yeah. With Archer, leader of the Gorgonites. Gorgonites. <laughs> what was the guy's name? The evil... Chip Hazard. Chip Hazard! Yes! You remember Chip Hazard, With don't you, Adam? the buzz cut list. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. He was voiced by Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that because the PS1 game is pretty yeah, good. It, it is ever. actually. I used I to think I've only played it once. And the movie's yeah. pretty good as well. Oh, the movie's like, great. The movie's so great fun. Yeah. I am Archer, leader of yeah, the Yeah, he used to have a little toy Archer. He was good fun. That's, that's why I remember that so clearly. Yeah, because that's all he would say. That's the only thing yeah. I ever said. I am Archer, leader of the Gorgonites. <laughs> <laughs> Boast <Nice>. much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so we've all seen Gremlins, which is awesome. So we have at least some small recollection. But like, it's like before we started watching it, the only thing I could remember is it starts in Chinatown. In uh, Yeah, I couldn't even remember. I just remembered the three, wall- three walls. The three rules. <laughs> three walls. <laughs> That's a shit house. It's a, pi- it's a pyramid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they live in that? a pyramid. <laughs> What's no, that? I-, I said, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with pyramids? Oh, yeah, Tom? sorry. We're, we're They're just... not a conventional house shape anymore. No, I mean... Or what's ever. the pity? <laughs> <laughs> we should all be living in pyramids. <laughs> We'd be a lot happier in pyramids. Well, we wouldn't, Adam. You can't be upset and depressed in a pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot Can't harder we? to climb to the top if you want to jump off. Or is it? Well, no, it's easier to climb up to the top. But I you would can't say. jump it. Because when you jump, you'll yeah, end you're up gonna sliding You're always going to end up hitting the house. You can't jump to the floor. Four thought. Yeah. That's what that is. Ah. 
for those suicidal Egyptians. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, the fact the fact is, is if you wanted to live in a live Come in on, a if place, if you were visited by ten bloody plagues, you'd be thinking, right, I'm ending it now. Yeah. You get yeah. to the, get to the fifth one, you're just like, I've had enough of this shit. But yeah. the thing is, it's like it's a bit counterproductive, isn't it? If you wanted to live in a home that you could also use to jump off to kill yourself, you'd just build a very tall, narrow home, wouldn't you? Like, I mean, come on, it's just like. The higher up you jump from, the more likely you, likely you are going to die. Yep. It's like that thing. It's like Chris <laughs> Morris, the guy who did Brass Eye. He had a sketch before Brass Eye. And he was like this suicidal man. He couldn't decide how to kill himself. So he decided he would jump out of the window of his office building. But he couldn't decide whether to jump out of the 100th floor one time. Or out of the first floor a hundred times. <laughs> and so in the end, he decided to jump out the first floor a hundred times. So literally, it's 20 minutes of footage of a guy jumping out the first floor, <laughs> getting up, cleaning his suit off, going back in the building, and then jumping back out the same window. It's the most repetitive comedy <laughs> sketch I've ever watched. And it's still funny. I love it. So Gremlins! So Gremlins, <laughs> yeah. On to Gremlins. <laughs> so... Right. This film was released in June 8th, 1984. So, quite interesting that it's released during the summer of 1984, and it's a Christmas As film. a Christmas movie. Yeah. yeah. How interesting is that? It's not your typical thing, is it? But I don't think the Christmas thing really plays into it, except for the fact that's the reason why it's got... Yeah, he's give, being given it as a Christmas. He's been given his so it, why as a Christmas present. Yeah, right. so the, the aspect that's of just Christmas... The lead, that's just the reason why he's got it. So it's like it's it's almost like the aspect of Christmas being a part of the film is more just for the setup. Yeah. But then why the couldn't film. it have, it have just have been his birthday? Do you know what I mean? Could have been, but it seems Christmas a lot more plausible. Easier. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Because nobody likes their child on their birthday, do they? Nobody likes their child. <laughs> so I, I guess that's a very relevant thing. So yeah, that makes sense. By the end day, okay. So 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 it starts off with. Um, the dad in Chinatown. Yes. And he's kind of wandering around. Then Initially, just he's a, trying to... Just a quick s- oh. thing. The first scene, there's a, a rickshaw with three nuns sat in the back of a oh, rickshaw yeah, in Chinatown. Point. What are nuns doing in Chinatown? Out for a good time. Just out for a good meal, aren't they? Are yeah. they? Yeah. Yep. I don't know. I don't know. Nuns can nuns, eat Chinese Are food? nuns even allowed to leave the convent? Of course they can. You've seen, you've seen nuns out and about, don't you? No. Every when now was and the again? last time you saw a nun? In Enfield. All right, prove me wrong. Yeah, exactly. I don't think I've ever seen a there's nun. A, there's, <laughs> there's a Catholic school, isn't there? And they got they're like they they got nuns as teachers. So it's like a fucking nunnery or something. What was that nun film when they were all singing? With Holy Whoopi Grail. Goldberg. No, with Whoopi Goldberg. Um, Sister Act. Sister, Sister Act. Act. Yeah. Anyway, Gremlins. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you guys have wondered. We're, we're kind of struggling with Gremlins, to be honest, and it's going to become increasingly more apparent when we get to the fucking game. Yeah. But so, we will so get the to dad's that. out in Chinatown. He's trying to flog this. Um, he's what, what does he call it? It's like, it's like it's an all in one. Bathroom buddy. Bathroom buddy, That's which it. he's invented. So it's essentially a plastic box that has loads of different bathroom bits in it. It has a mirror in it, a shaver in it, toothpaste, a toothbrush. No, the the, the razor came later, didn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, that, the razor that was later. That was uh, a Mark up... two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's crap, basically. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, let's be honest. The uh, wise, ancient, mystic Chinese man definitely wasn't impressed by it. No. So he tries to flog it to this geezer who clearly didn't care. No, I mean, and he's then, not. He's um, clearly not the target audience for somebody who has, you know, he, he's kind of like long beard, long hair, unkempt, bad teeth, smoker, blind in one eye. He's probably not the target audience for a bathroom buddy. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, <It's> like, no. <laughs> so, I mean, he, he, was, he was punching. He was definitely punching. And obviously he didn't take him. So, um, no, suddenly he heard some weird squeaking. Yes. And he uh, found a mogwai. Yes. Which... Okay, so here's the first time we're introduced to a Mogwai in the in the movie, mm-hmm. and just like every pers- every other person in this movie, yes. who have never seen a Mogwai before, have no idea what it is. It's just this alien creature. Yes, he's so blasé. Yes, like, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, this, that's cute. I'll take that home for my son. It's like. Yeah, it's just, does, your, it's just, does, does your son like Mogwais? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, he might. <laughs> yeah, it's just a creature no one's ever seen before. It's yeah, it's, and it's just every, no one. No one seems to care. Everyone's like, "Oh, it's a Mogwai." Oh, sweet. The thing is, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's oh, like cool. him a hamster. Oh, cool Mogwai. <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's very weird. Well, the thing is, it's like it's the type of thing. It's so, it's so kind of detached from reality in that sense because you like you know imagine like if just came over to yours today, Steph. 
like to do the podcast. And you're just like, oh, you know, just uh, introduce you to my pet Sarlax. And it's like, <laughs> what the fuck? And it's like, it's like a 10 foot fucking like lizard, but it's not a lizard because it's got rabbit ears. And then we're like, cool Sarlax. Where'd you get it? Can I get one? And you're oh, like, Chinatown. Yeah, you're like Chinatown. And we're like, I don't go there. Too many nuns. <laughs> 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 Yeah, so I mean, it's it's like, and that, and you're right, like you're totally right, and this becomes like even more ridiculous as the film goes on. Yeah, like people's yeah. kind of like total like uh, nonchalantness, yeah, nonchalantness yeah. to uh, to Mogwise. Yeah. So um, it yeah, but it, like you say, it's apparent from the start when he's initially kind of considering buying it. But um, the owner of the store, which is the uh, the granddad, the old wise man, uh, says he's not for sale, mm-hmm. and so his <coughs> industrious uh, grandson does a basically a back alley deal with him yeah which i think is a bit off as well yeah it's your granddad's mogwai for a start yeah. don't go selling your granddad's mogwai yeah it's no. like you coming home and be like someone someone's interested in buying our dog and then your dad's like no I'm, we're not selling the dog <laughs> yeah like, oh i know worries <laughs> and then as the <laughs> dog is room, you put a dog in a box and go outside. I was, like, was it 200 quid was it mate yeah, <laughs> <it is." laughs> <laughs> yeah so um not not the best grandson no, not the best. But grandson. he made a sweet two hundred dollars. Yeah, and but obviously he, he pocketed did get that his, himself. He didn't did it? get his comeuppance because he never made another movie. So. Yes, this is true. <laughs> this is very true. This was this was the end of his career. He's forty six now. That boy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wonder what he's been doing. Back alley deals. Yeah. It's most likely. Yeah, he's, he's got a knack for it. Market. Yeah, yeah, black market. <laughs> so um, yeah. So I mean, so eventually he does uh the the dad at least. Did we get the dad's name by the way? Um. No, I'm sure he has the best voice in the world. Whoever, yeah, whoever he is, he's really just got that voice. like deep all American. Yeah, proper yeah. American. Sounds like a country singer. Yeah, he does yeah. very much so. Yeah, yeah. So he he, he procures this Mogwai who eventually becomes Gizmo. Who's and, like a, the... and the kid says, you know, three three rules. Ah, uh, yes. One, <clears throat> never get them wet. Yeah. Oh no, the first first rule is um. They don't like don't, light. Yeah, don't yeah. put them in the sunshine. They don't like bright lights. Yep. Definitely no sunshine. Two, don't get them wet. Yes. Three, never feed them after midnight. Yes. No matter what they do, never feed them after midnight. Yes. They're the three rules. The thing yeah. is, I mean, this this is, I hate to interrupt, but this is obviously coming from a, a mind as disturbed as mine. But if I were the dad, I was thinking he didn't say he couldn't have sex with it. <laughs> that went down well. Yeah, fuck's sake. We can cut that bit. We can't cut no, that bit. No, we're not going to cut that <laughs> bit. Um, so, yeah, so they're the rules. And then the, the dad still thinks, yeah, sweet, no worries, and takes it home. Mm. But I said to you, wouldn't it be a pain in the ass having a pet that you can't have any water lying around? Mm-hmm. You have to have the curtain shut 24-7. Yes. And you can't feed it. And you can't feed it <laughs> after midnight. Yeah. But you can't even give it water. So what does it drink? The thing does is, it, is... Does it survive off the food, like the water and food? Maybe just doesn't need what like we said, this is an alien creature. <laughs> yeah. no that everyone's blase is, about. Yeah, that no one gives a shit about. But what does it eat? I think later on in the film you see him in like a box of chicken or something. The thing I is can't though, remember. I, 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 I kind of a, a, a thing's coming to me, like the whole thing with animals and domestication is that animals get like an effectively an easy life out of it. They get a benefit, which is why kind of cats and dogs over many years have kind of, you know, yeah. Have 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 stuck about with humanity basically, is because like they get basically free house and board, like, you know, two meals a day or whatever and like unlimited sources of water and they don't have to worry you know but let's be honest what's what's a mogwai getting out of this relationship and what's a human getting out of a relationship well, the mogwai, with a mogwai? He gets to sing along with the piano and he gets to uh, Watch bully TV. a dog he gets yeah. To, yeah. oh yeah poor dog yeah we'll get but around just, to that I, but I just don't I don't really get it to be honest it's like but a mogwai can't do anything else about it what does it eat what is it like how is it alive because you can feed it during the day, you just can't feed it after midnight. Although technically every single minute is up. But then midnight. also nobody knows what the diet of a mogwai is, the natural diet. What do they eat? That's a good in point, the actually. Where's the cap? Yeah, so what is it, sunrise? Maybe. 6, 6 a.m.? Yeah. I'd say 6 a.m. That's not explained. We did say this as we were watching the movie. He should have given a little bit more information. Just yeah, a little Chinese yeah. like a little his, book. As he's... How to look after your mogwai. Mogwai for dummies. Mogwai 101, yeah. yeah. 
instructional DVD. <laughs> <laughs> so you've bought a Mogwai. <laughs> <laughs> you unlucky fucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, so, I mean, none of this is particularly clearly explained. But anyway, I guess for the kind of the purpose of it being just like a cool, fun movie, I guess it's not particularly important. It is our kind of job to analyse to some degree. But maybe yeah. the maybe the dietary habits of uh, diurnal not, uh, Mogwais isn't particularly important. Maybe not. No. So, on that note, he buys a Mogwai for his son. And he brings it back home. And let's be honest. Well, there's the whole scene with the kid in the bank. Was that after it? I thought he... Could... No, that was before. Yeah, that was, that was before. So, this is when we were introduced to our main oh, character. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy. 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 And his VW Beetle hey, had Billy. broken down. And his racist ass yeah, neighbour. But no, his, yeah. his neighbour seems racist against non American cars. Well, he's, yeah, he's just. I don't an know how he is with people, but non American yeah. cars he's not happy with. He basically yeah. is like Trump supporter through and through. He's like, <laughs> yeah. gotta he buy American, <laughs> eat American, Support sleep American. American, be American, <laughs> talk American, yeah. Everything American, basically. Everything American. Yeah. yeah. So he was. So because because um, Billy's VW Beetle, is it a Beetle? It was a yeah. Beetle, yeah. Yeah. Beetle. Yeah. Was covered under like four inches of snow, <laughs> yeah. and therefore wouldn't start. And when he tries to start it, and he opened the boot, well, I assume the engine in the boot on one of this, opens the boot, and then bloody like what steam and yeah, smoke came pouring yeah. out. Yeah. And then the, the racist neighbor came over and goes, "Oh, I think you need a jump start." Yeah, he's he's. I mean, it's, it's yeah. The quite battery's e- flat. It's quite evident yeah. from the uh, from the small conversation they have. He's not the brightest man. No. So um, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I I did write down in the notes that he's subtly racist because I mean, it's like it's inclined that he basically, like you say, doesn't trust anything which isn't all American. So obviously, there's this kind of subtle hint of like you know anything which is foreign outside or you know somewhat alien to me is just wrong in every way. But it's all game for the Mogwai. Actually, I don't think he sees the Mogwai. But no. Yeah. In, in, in fact, he'd probably be the one rational person in this film. Yeah, he'd probably be like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And everyone's like, uh, it's a fucking Mogwai. That's definitely European. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. So, I mean, you know, he'd, he'd probably have a rational head on about the Mogwai. But when it comes to cars, yeah, he's a bit, bit of a bit of a, mm, bit of a, a weird one. Yeah. So, then... He goes to, I thought it was a bank. Was it a bank? Yeah. He works at a it bank. Looks like yeah. a bank. He goes to a bank with his dog and he like puts his dog under the counter. No one sees it. Yeah. Which was quite impressive on its own. And then you meet yeah. a woman. What was her name? Mrs. Mrs. Harris. Mrs. Harris. Who's oh, just... no. Before that, we meet another woman. Oh, Jesus Christ. Here we go. Phoebe Cates. Phoebe Cates. That's the actress. I don't know her name in the film. Katie. It was Kate. I don't, I don't remember. It was Kate. Yeah. Was it Kate? Yeah, I think so. Maybe. Could be. So we're introduced to her and she works alongside Billy as one of the, I guess they're just like a banking clerk or something. They're, yeah. they're, not, yeah, they're not particularly high up, you know, they're kind of like straight in on ground level. But um, so basically her and Billy kind of have a little thing going. There's a spark in both of their eyes. Mm-hmm. And I would say Billy's a very lucky man because Phoebe Cates is a very pretty lady. And that's not her one defining feature. She's also... A wonderful actress, as is evident in this film. Is she? Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> anything else Phoebe Cates has done. Drop Dead Fred. Anything else other than that? Anything in the last 15 years? Drop Dead Fred 2? <laughs> <laughs> Don't think that exists. <laughs> no, it doesn't, does it? However, she is married to Kevin Klein, so... So there, you like there, her. There must be something about her. Well, there you go, see? But I don't see it. I do. Yeah, but you see it in everyone. I don't see it in everyone. In fact, there is like quite substan there's evidence like the every episode audio evidence. Much. Yeah, every episode. <laughs> well, I think Phoebe Cates is glorious and a wonderful actress and I wish her all the best. Alright, well after that we <laughs> meet uh, what was it, Miss Miss Harris. Mrs. Yeah. Harris. Who was basically Scrooge. Yeah, basically yeah. From, yeah, it's from kind Charles of Dickens. Seems to be quite closely based on the tale of Scrooge, to be honest. So uh, yeah, a very kind of wealthy uh, erudite lady. Erudite? Is that a dis- good description? Aerodactyl? Yep. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so basically a, a wealthy dinosaur in a, in, a, in, a, in a hat turns up at this bank and was like, 
but but this is the thing I don't get. So basically, like uh, a young woman with her two kids was like, you know, I haven't really secured that much money. Could you help us out, basically, in a kind of subtle way? And Mrs. Harris is obviously, uh, you know, well known in this town as one of the kind of monopolizing people of this town. You know, she's clearly a wealthy woman, and a yep. lot of people know it. They're aware of it, and you know, she she kind of plays off the typical Scrooge card. She's mean to everyone, horrible to everyone, doesn't give handouts, doesn't want to share her wealth. It's all hers and it's hers alone. But then for some reason, the only reason she seems to come into the bank is because she wants to take Billy's dog away, impound it, and that would be the least of its worries because if she had her way, she would, what did she say, put it in a fucking tumble dryer or something? Yeah. So basically what happened was uh, Billy's dog broke her snowman that's it but like not a snow snowman it was like one of those plastic snowmen yeah yeah and he broke the head off which yeah. we didn't see him do no no i don't think we saw and, it anyway. and technically she might not have seen it she might have just yeah, like just found the head was... on the ground and was just like it's that damn rascal dog again. and then at, at first i thought she just wanted to like make sure the dog was told off for it yeah but then the next thing it was like i'm gonna take the dog Put I'm it in a get it fucking down. tumble dryer. Oh yeah, yeah. Initially, and, then, yeah. And, then, and then she said, "If I had hold of it, I'd put it in the tumble dryer." And then, but then that guy, that like random guy, just chimes up and was like, mm, "That'll that, do it. That'll <laughs> sort it out." And he's just like, "Who the fuck are you?" <laughs> 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 um, yeah. So basically, we're kind of we're, we're introduced as Mister uh, Mister Harris, Mrs. Harris, as an unstable, wealthy lady um, who is clearly uh, abusive towards animals. Yeah. So then the dog. The dog's very aware of what's going on as well, isn't it? It's the most too aware. aware. Yeah, the most aware yeah. dog I've ever seen. So the dog obviously hears all this. And he's like, I'm not going to fucking tumble dry it, bitch. So <laughs> then he, uh, he jumps on the counter and bites her face. Or no, it gets right, her arm. He just jumps, he jumps over her, but... I think he gets her arm. You know he? what else is quite clever? He untied himself. From underneath yeah, the desk. Did, yeah, he was tied up under the desk. This this dog... Uh, if I was... Billy is a fucking thick kid. Let's be honest. He's like he's totally got, like, oblivious to a, a fucking alien species, which his dad has bought him for Christmas. And his dog is, is, is like able to understand English, understand the concepts of a, of a conversation which is going on between humans, untie himself and then chime in by trying to bite Mrs. Harris's face off. And Billy's yeah. like, and Billy's just oblivious to all of this. Yeah. What the fuck's wrong with Billy? So then after that scene, you've then got Mrs. Harris who's like, oh, my heart's weak. And then she turns and plays the victim, even though she's a yeah. bitch. Tip- typical and then, pussy. Yeah. And, 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 not, and not like, not like she's a, not like because she's a woman, like. I agree with just like, she's, a, what you she's said. a pussy, you know. Like that's typical like bully mentality, isn't it? You're a pussy really. Like, you know, you're all big and talk. You're all fucking teeth. No I feel like trousers. there's some unresolved issues from Tom's childhood. I fucking I know. They're all pussies, really. They're all, they're all big and tall. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. Really, I just, really. I just, I just hate them. All right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what I'm trying to say is, she's a bully. Yeah, she's a bully. Yeah. So then Billy, who's not a bully, Billy's not a bully, uh, goes back home where his dad then gives him a. No, he goes home and he uses one of his dad. Is it his dad's invention? Yeah, or? his dad's an invention. Because his like a... his mum says. Uh, it works. Of, well, it works well the first couple of times. Yeah, all of and these things are, are, are his dad's. Yeah, his dad's things. Yeah. So his dad's an inventor, as we saw from the. the Which kind of happens a lot well, in funny. American movies, don't you get it? Where it's like, oh, the dad's a crazy inventor. Honey, I shrunk it, the kids. None of his stuff actually works that well. And it's just yeah. like. Yeah, yeah. How many of these people are floating about in America where they're making their own egg crackers? It's the American dream. Egg exactly. crackers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so the thing that he uses that's, is that's an egg a cracker. great name for a sex toy: an egg cracker. <laughs> <laughs> But it's the noise. So basically, it's got like four <laughs> eggs going down a little bit of a ramp. Yeah. And it's got a chicken's head. Mm. And it screams <laughs> like... <"Aah!" laughs> and then it forms his head down, head butts the egg, and there's fucking splats egg everywhere. So... But our point was, how difficult is it to crack an egg? Well, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... And uh, you know what? Like, Billy needs to get his fucking act together. And stop using his dad's inventions. And his mum needs to like really say to the dad and be like, "Look, you know, if this carries on, we we are over. Yeah, we are definitely over because yeah, I can't keep woman. using your fucking shit inventions." All yeah, because the there was another one later on, which was an orange juice, sir. Orange juice, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like yeah. it said orange juice, sir. Orange <laughs> like, sir. Uh, yes, please. Orange juice, sir. <laughs> An orange juicer. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is, isn't it? And I guess it's just a juicer. That's like a juicer. An orange press. 
an orange, an orange press. press. Yeah. But the thing is, that's already been invented. Why, <laughs> did, why did he have to make his own version? And uh, let's be honest, a quite a defunct one at that. <laughs> yeah. No, like, but we said like, <laughs> we did so say so he put one orange in it and it like filled up a bit of the glass and then it kind of exploded and went everywhere. Yeah. But a lot of juice went everywhere. Got a lot of juice. So this geezer's worked yeah. out how to make more juice out of one orange than is physically inside one orange. So yes. he's done quite a good job. I, I guess I guess it's it's like it's like a very efficient juicer, basically. Very efficient. But also like I mean, what about the fucking coffee machine? Oh yeah. Like they exist. Yeah, and his coffee one came machines out looking exist, like tar. And his, yeah, his one, yeah, it just looks <laughs> like fucking tarmac. It's like... Yeah, so but wait, wait, wait. This guy's useless. Maybe this guy's just way ahead of his time. Because maybe in 1985, when this came out... Four. Uh, 84, sorry, when this came <laughs> that out... That year makes all the difference. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there wasn't a coffee machine. Yeah, but there was. Like, like an espresso or whatever. No, was there? Yeah, yeah, well, we they, they had, they, they, had yeah, they, they did have there? filter coffees. And like, maybe there wasn't, there wasn't like just an orange press where you could just chuck in a whole orange, not have to peel it or anything first, and yeah, it just squeezes did. your juice. Yeah. How do you know? Were you there? Well, no, but, but they, they did, like, like electronic if you're over orange 30 presses years were old, like, like... If you're over 30 years old and you lived through the 80s, please let us know. And you lived through the 80s. <laughs> and you lived if you were unlucky <laughs> enough you made the, you made <laughs> for this to have been your childhood. <laughs> <laughs> right in and let us know. Jesus yeah. Christ. And then listen but, to us slate the games you but, used to play. But the play. thing is, it's like, I would never say this man's ahead of his time. Look, he tried to sell a, a fucking plastic cube with a toothbrush super glued to it to a guy in Chinatown. Like, what... what it's the most unstable selling strategy I've ever heard in my life. This is going to change the world. That is exactly what he said. And what was it? It's a toothbrush on a fucking plastic cube. It has a little mirror in it. Oh, it has a yeah. dentist's mirror. Great. I don't know what else was on that. Probably thing. had some floss. Yeah. Well, the thing is, like, it's like you said, he, made, he makes the Mark II model at one point. And he's like, Billy, Billy, you'll love this. Look at this. It's the fucking bathroom body. He didn't say fucking. He said it's the bathroom body Mark II. And Billy was like... You know, secretly in his head, you can see he's like thinking, yeah, it's just like the old one, Dad. And he goes, ta-da! And he just pulls out a razor, and it's like, that's the one thing you fucking did to it. That's fucking shit, isn't it? You, since Chinatown, the one problem you had with it is that, like, it's shot toothpaste all over you. And you thought, okay, how do I fix this? Razor. Yeah, I'll add a razor blade to it. And it's like, this Turn guy's not ahead weapon. of his time. Turn it into a weapon. Yeah, so if anyone takes the piss at you for carrying around a... Block of plastic a gun attachment, or, yeah, yeah, you or a flip knife, shank. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bathroom buddy. See now that knife. that's a, that, <laughs> yeah, <it's> a <laughs> for those tough days at the office or in Harlem. <laughs> Harlem was horrible in the eighties. Fucking dreadful. Anyway, so right, so the Mogwai actually being given as a present. Yeah. So his, his dad comes in and gives it. He comes in singing. La, At first la, we la, thought la, if he could actually say any normal words, but he can. La, 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 he just sings la, 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 la. Hello, Dad. La, 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 la. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. He's back. Dad's home. Yeah, <laughs> again. <laughs> uh, so he's got this big package. <laughs> <laughs> and he hands it to his son. <laughs> 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 Dad, I don't want to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> no, son, Daddy, no, no, son. It's We call it Mogwai. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's not what I call mine. <laughs> but yeah, so his, his son's like, oh, is it for me? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> and his wife was like, <laughs> I, I don't want fucking it. Hate, <laughs> fucking hate you, Billy. He used to be like that with me. <laughs> he used to love me. Sorry. He used to give me Mogwai but every he, night. <laughs> he asks if it's a birdcage and, and then, then shakes, shakes it. it. Dickhead. Yeah. Fucking dickhead. There's a lot of animal <laughs> abuse in this film. There is, isn't there? Um, it's fucking good. It's a then theme. He, then, he's, then uh, his dad's like, no, no, stop shaking it. You'll, you'll kill it. <laughs> <laughs> is this yeah. still... We're still talking about his mogwai? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, package. don't shake it. Not too hard. Not too hard. It's fragile. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to... You don't want to... Oh, I don't know. You don't want to don't don't shake his dad's package too hard. <laughs> Don't, 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 open the break it. <laughs> don't want to open it to premature. Oh, so um, um, he eventually opens up his dad's package. Yeah, and, uh, and, and what a, comes oh, out boy, sticks his head up. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake! So Mogwai sticks his head up. Well, the thing is, it's like ah, uh, going back to people not being phased, mm-hmm. right? 
So initially Gizmo kind of like just quickly jumps out, doesn't it? Gives them all a little fright. And then you just see his little hands coming out of the box. And he pulls his head up. And Billy, instead of going, what the fucking shit is that? I don't want it. <laughs> I clearly wanted a birdcage, an empty one at that. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and instead of doing that, he's just like, oh, cool. What is it? And he was like, oh, they call it a mogwai. Oh, that's nice. He's cute, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, I'll give him a cuddle. Have a cuddle. Have a photo. You have a photo, man. Yeah. All right. What fucking dysfunctional shit am I watching? Yeah, I, it's I, like I would be quite confused with the hell Jerry the Springer thing is. or some shit. Yeah. My dad brought back home an alien. <laughs> alien sat on my lap. Mum took a picture. It freaked out. Now we all hate each other. My dad's still trying to get me to open his package. <laughs> it's like, this is just like an episode of Jerry Springer, isn't it? Hmm. Sorry. <laughs> so that's when we're introduced to Gizmo. And Gizmo is cute. Yeah, Gizmo is cute. Um, again, still pretty alien looking. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Cute in a very, oh, he's small and furry. Type of way, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you took the fur off, he just looked like a weird testicle, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not like a normal testicle, no. But, um, uh, just to uh, throw it out there, uh, Gizmo is voiced by Michael Winslow, who we all remember We're assuming as... this here. Oh, no, no, you we, we did it, we did no. our he's actually voiced by um, a shit ton of people. Well, Gizmo, no, 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 the Mogwai voice. Oh, no, but G- Gizmo individually. I don't think, no, Gizmo is Howie Mandel, who's actually the, oh. um, one of the judges from America's Got Talent. Oh. And he himself looks a bit like a. A Gizmo. An alien. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, he looks like. Oh, you, I know did him. Did you ever watch Men in Black, the first one? Yeah. Yes. Right, you know the, the alien that Will Smith chases the first time before he's actually Who in the Men in Black? The top, one on the right. Top right. Oh, him, yeah, I know him. Does yeah. he look like he's a. Yes. Some sort of alien. Yeah, I guess he does. Which, which fits in eyes. well with the kind of theme of basically the Mogwais being an alien race. Yeah. And maybe that's why I cast him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wasn't good maybe. at voices, just for he's fit for the role. <laughs> he looks good. But um, uh, other Mogwais are voiced by, uh, well, at least one of them is voiced by Michael Winslow, who is uh, the guy who is amazing with sound effects. It's pretty much his kind of, his one call of fame, isn't it? Mm. But um, he's had a career on it, uh, the guy from Police Academy, Spaceballs, etc. Uh, really did loads of movies like, you know, late 80s, early 90s sort of thing. So he does Mogwai voices, but we've also got the voice actors of both Optimus Prime and Megatron. Yeah. So it's clear to see that, you know, if they do try hard enough, they can get on. There's a message in there. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a message in there, you know. It's like Decepticons and as, Autobots. As far as we got, can... there was no speech from... Um... Well, there, there, there were there were sound no. effects like, like they they obviously just did little kind of chirpy voices for some of the Mogwais and stuff. So we might have actually heard some, but we're just not aware of it. Yeah. It's like we said, you know, we expected them to kind of like come out and just be like Autobots assemble, yeah. roll out, roll out. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's when so he, he takes he takes Gizmo out and he's yeah playing with him. The mum's like, let's take a picture. Dad doesn't think to pipe up at all. They take yeah. a picture and then Gizmo gets scared and that's when Dad's like, oh yeah, shit, there's three rules. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that, that, that reminded yeah. me. But yeah. it gets like, really sinister at that point. And like, yeah. like, the music kind of went and like, it, it gets zoomed in on the dad. And, yeah. yeah, and I was like, but when the kid told the dad about the rules, the dad kind of shrugged it off. Yeah, exactly. But now all of a sudden the dad like, he, he's, knows more than the kid knew. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. Like, he's been reading his book. Definitely don't <laughs> give him water. <laughs> So, no, so he, he, he relays the kind of three golden rules of how to keep your mogwai. And uh, <laughs> and Billy's and Billy's like... Billy's <laughs> like a happy mogwai. Yeah, and Billy's just like, oh, yeah, that's absolutely fine. And it's like... No normal no normal person would do that. Cause, no. Like, imagine if a mog- mogwai lived in the sign in ha- the house in signs. You know, with a little girl oh, and a glass don't. of water everywhere. Bo. It'd be a nightmare, wouldn't little it? Little yeah, bow, yeah. Oh, God. Probably it's contaminated. <laughs> yeah. Another one's contaminated, is it, Bo? God, I tell it's you got what. It's got a mogwai in you it. You are on thin ice. Um, right, so then after that, he kind of takes mob, uh, gives him upstairs and they he, play music. Yeah, he sings kind of, around, doesn't he? Yeah, and his mate comes over and is, again, another one of these Played people uh, from Corey Feldman. By, yeah, that dude. Yeah, sure Everyone knows Corey Feldman. Yeah, from the Goonies. Um, but, yeah, so his mate comes over. Mm-hmm. Playing with this Mogwai again, no idea what it is, but he's just like, oh yeah, that's cool. Starts reading his comic book. Comic book. It is literally that nonchalant. Then oh, they yeah, manage to cool. get water on the bloody thing. The one thing his dad's told him not to do. 
First thing he does, takes it upstairs. Yeah, and his little mate spills um, like a paintbrush pot that's it, of water that's it. in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes on to Gizmo's back. And Gizmo starts having this like epileptic Seizure. fit. Yeah, it just goes yeah. Like, And neither of them look like they care. They're just no. like, <laughs> it's like, what's no. happening to your Mogwai, mate? Mogwai. Like, come on, sort him out. And then he starts shooting fur out of his ass. <laughs> <laughs> right? And now they're looking like Is this slight, normal? slightly puzzled, but still like not as much as you should be at this point. Yeah, got... and then, then they're staring at the, the new fur balls that are on the other side of the thing whilst in the background. Uh, Gizmo still Gizmo's just like still ah, oh, oh, oh. foaming from the mouth. <laughs> and they're just like, oh, what's going on over here? What's this little <laughs> thing? And Gizmo's just like, ah! <laughs> but yeah, it was... Uh, so, bi- bi- Billy... Weird reactions in this film. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, but it... The worst one is comes after that because all these little furballs turn into to new mogwai, right? So, mm, it's got within five... Within seconds, Within yeah. seconds. So, there's five new creatures born onto this table. Billy's mate looks at them and goes, oh, there's five now. Can I have one? And he goes, no, no, no. What I don't the know about that. What's wrong with these people? So, Billy's mate goes, all right, goes back to reading his bloody comic book. Yeah, this yeah. Thing. Yeah, like nothing had just <laughs> happened. <laughs> It's just um, you've just reproduced using water. The thing is, though, I mean, let, let's be honest. This, uh, the, these events are transpiring within, say, I don't know, just over five minutes from Billy is first given in the film uh, Gizmo in the Except box. That, yeah, it's it's, not long. I mean, it's not a huge space of time. So within kind of five minutes of the viewer's impression of him owning an alien creature, he's done a fucking shit job. Yeah. He's, he, you know, but it's fair, it wasn't Billy's fault. But again, Billy shouldn't have no, water Billy, lying but around the his thing room is, it's like, to be spilt on. The, he's been given three golden rules, and his da- like you said, his dad was incredibly stern when he said it. It was like a, you know, you would take that to fucking heart. Yeah, but... you'd say, you'd say, look, whatever his mate's name is, he'd just be like, look, you know, I've got something really crazy to show you, and you may not even believe it, or who knows, you may just think it's totally fucking normal. <laughs> but, but like, you know, you all I'm gonna say is, you know, don't get water on it, no bright lights, so keep the curtains closed. You know, you'd be sure of it, wouldn't you? Yeah, but... But instead, he's just like, he leaves his fucking paint equipment out and water and shit. His dad was really serious about it, yeah. Yeah. And then he he puts them all in a box, and he comes down and says, look, Dad, look what happened. I spilled water on Gizmo, and there's like five more. His dad's like, oh, that's amazing. We could sell these and make money. (laughs) <laughs> you know what it's just a collection of some of the worst people in the world yeah. isn't it he wasn't like didn't I tell you not to do that he's just like oh sweet we got more let's make some cash <laughs> this guy's fu- well obviously he's not he's not making a killing with inventing is he let's no. be honest so, I mean he's got he's got to get his money from somewhere yeah, so he's, so, he's just uh, trying to be a bit industrious torturing it, Gizmo and making more Mogwai and like a sex slave without the sex a slave sorry just like a slave that's what I'm trying to say he's a slave fucking hell I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> He's a slave, yeah. So they're, they're, they're basically, that that becomes some sort of like strange business plan. And then they actually start doing it, don't they? This becomes... No, like, we don't see... No, 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 no they don't do see, that. No. Do you know? I thought, I thought they, did, they did a drop on one no, of No, no, so what, yeah. what happened next was... Um, took him to a lab. Yeah, Billy weren't too sure what was going on, so he took Gizmo to school and took him to the lab with the teacher and then he put like a droplet on, on um, Gizmo and then Gizmo spawned another one and then the teacher kept that one to study it. I love the way it, 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 it took all of these events for him to finally say something's not right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The fact that you received a fucking alien in a box for Christmas in the first place is kind <laughs> of evidence enough to say, you know, maybe things are a bit weird right now. You know, maybe yeah. Dad's going through something. But let's talk about a bit with the dog. Oh, fuck, yeah. Poor old... What was his name? Dog. Dog. <laughs> 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 poor dog. Poor, <laughs> poor, poor dog. So basically, Billy is just sleeping, as you do at night time, and all the other gremlins are just uh, gremlins. Zed, uh, sorry, Zed in a way. Mogwai's, Mogwai, yeah. So, so, and Gizmo's got special treatment. He sleeps alongside Billy, and um, the other ones sleep in like a little box with a blanket. And he can hear the dog kind of whimpering, you know. And he's like, "Dog, what the hell are you doing? Do you need to poo?" And Obviously, dog's not there, and he's like, where is he? Where is he? And he finds the dog uh, tied up with Christmas lights outside the front of the house, almost like he's being uh, hanged. Yeah. And, I mean, the dog's, like, motionless, and I think, shit, he could have been there a while. I mean, Billy yeah. was asleep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's obvious that the Mogwais... Dog took it on the chin, though, to be fair. Yeah, dog was pretty cool with it. Well, he, he, was, was... he was happy as Larry but It's It's quite but... clear that one of the Mogwais is evil as fuck it's the one with the mohawk yeah the one with yeah, the mohawk he's the leader yeah. isn't 
Yeah. yeah. He's a prat. But I think that was about it. That was that was a half hour, wasn't it? I don't think anything happened after that. That no. was about a half an hour. So we didn't end. actually see him turn into gremlins? No. No, we didn't get to. No. So the film, in our eyes, at least for this point, should be called Mogwai, not Gremlins. Yeah, Mogwai. And the problem I'm having is I can't really remember much after... I can't remember anything that happens after this. The thing is, I remember when I was a kid, I remember finding it quite scary. Like, not like yeah. scary to the point where I, th- I couldn't sleep, but like, I remember hiding bit, my eyes. Bit freaky, yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, just the. But I don't remember what happens. Visage of the, the gremlins. They are, they are ugly as fuck creatures. Aren't <laughs> yeah. They? Let's be honest. And then yeah. I did, they get turned into Furbies, and it became like this really cute thing. Yeah. Do you not remember? They look exactly like Furbies. No. Yeah, they definitely what do. Did you ever have a Furby when you were young? Yeah, I had a couple. Yeah, they look they just look like exactly Mogwai. Like oh, Mogwai, you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I've never had a Furby look like a gremlin. <laughs> yeah. That'd be fucking <laughs> no, terrifying. Even the Mogwais, like, realistically, they're ugly as fuck creatures. No, oh, yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah. But so are Furbies, really. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. But, like, I mean. <sighs> even if. Like, if, if he bought. Why didn't he just buy a son of Furby? <laughs> Although if you get Furbies one on them, they break. Exist, exist back then. Oh yeah, that's true. That is true. Okay. So, um, so that was basically the end of it. So that was our half an hour. Any, was there any more notes? No, to be honest, we've covered pretty much all of it, at least for the half an hour we yeah. watched. Um, <sighs> on to the game, I'm guessing. Well, would you would you carry on watching the film after the first oh, half yeah. hour? I, I would carry on watching the film, but just yeah. because I know it's going to be good. Cult classic, sort of. Yeah. But if I was just going off that first half an hour alone, I'm not sure. I'm, I think it's more the reputation which pulls you rather yeah, than it's the because I know yeah, I've seen it before film. and I know I've enjoyed yeah. it before. Yeah. But I just from that half an hour, I think I thought it was just quite slow. Because quite if you're just taking it half an hour, I, I'm thinking, why did they introduce Miss whatever the fuck her name was? Yeah, because the 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 bad guys are obviously the Mogwai, the well, the gremlins, gremlins when yeah. they get turned. Yeah. So why have this evil person? But if, the, the thing if is she you, comes up again, but I still don't understand it because it's, it's called Gremlins. So yeah. it's the Gremlins that are the bad things, not this but, random. But it's like I was woman. saying earlier. It's very possible that it has it has a very metaphorical meaning behind it, and it's like, but who are the real Gremlins? You know, who watches the Watchmen? The racist next that door. Sort of yeah, exactly. The Scrooge bitch. Yeah, the they're the real. They're the yeah, real Gremlins. Be. Exactly. Well, we humans are the real gremlins. We just crack this. Yeah. yeah. Humans are the real gremlins. But, but yeah, I, but yeah I, I would probably watch it. Yeah, yeah I, I would carry on watching it. Yeah. Who knew it was so <laughs> esoteric? Huh? Who knew this movie was so esoteric? Yeah. Well, I mean, nobody did until uh, wow. us just at sh- Cash Grab <laughs> totally fucking nailed it. Boom. Unless yeah. someone already nailed it and we yeah. just haven't done any research. Boom. Mm, that's a point <laughs> but I'll take I'm not going to well, watch every we'll, video on YouTube about gremlins <laughs> 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 well uh, okay so from that let's let's move on to the game and uh, well so the game was on Atari the, there was two released there was Atari 2600 and Atari 5200 yes and initially right. they are meant to be released at, at the, the same, same time, time. And, and to coincide with the film so they are yeah, meant to be released in 84 and they were both developed by Atari yeah uh, but then Atari were going through some problems because of the video game crash of 1983. Yeah, yeah, the year previous. So, so, so basically, they they had nothing in their coffers. Yeah, so so basically, they just messed up and they didn't end up releasing the 5200 version, which is what we played. What is? I don't know if either of you know, but what is the video gra- crash of 1983? It was. It was basically what, from what I remember, there's a there's a really good podcast called Do Go On, mm. and they basically every week they do um, name drop. A, yeah, might as well. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they do a different um, topic, and they've done one about a video game crash. And from what I remember, I mean, just go and listen to it is the easiest way. But from what I remember, it was things like Atari got too big for their own boots, basically, and they mm. got the license for ET, which was massive. Um, and then they gave a guy three months to develop a game for it, and then they printed so many games. But back then, like the cartridge and all that, it cost a lot more. Cost, yeah, cost, yeah, cost, yeah, cost a lot of money. Yeah. Um, they printed enough that everyone who owned the console was on. So I don't know what it was on. It was say 5,200, whatever. Yeah, I think it was 26. Yeah. Um, they'd had to buy two copies each to sustain Atari. Yeah. So they released 
double the amount of games that there were actual Ataris because they thought they'd it's, sell yeah. Atari systems for this game and then this game is notoriously shit. It's a, <laughs> it's a matter of corporate greed, basically. And then there were the whole rumours that they buried it in New, New Mexico and then it was actually true. It was found they actually like did a year, bury it was, a, it was found two years ago, Yeah, I think. they actually they did buried bury... The, they, they, buried buried the all the, yeah, they, they actually, buried all the excess copies that was, they would never be able to sell. It was just a myth for, for years and no one like really believed it and someone went and looked and it they was actually it. true. Yeah, they found the massive of them. Dick, yeah. Yes. Massive. Tell you what, that's a fucking cash grab. <laughs> 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 True enough. Yeah, we'll get to Atari. I've thought yeah. the uh, ET, but I just I can't bring myself to do it. Uh, maybe like for our thousandth episode or something. Yeah, I mean, that's that's yeah, a way. Week. That's a ways <laughs> off. We don't have to commit too hard, do we? Yeah. But um, yeah, so obviously after the video game crash of 1983, Atari were in, but you know, basically the worst position a company could be, and they they effectively had no kind of like uh, backlog of money. Any projects they could commit to were incredibly shaky because they they had no kind of commitments or people didn't want to commit with them. Mm. Um, So they they couldn't uh, release this uh, to coincide with Gremlins just because there were so many complications with, you know, uh, money and kind of different projects being caught up at the same time. And, And basically they were just like liquidating huge amounts of the company whilst Gremlins was being produced. So it kept on getting changed to different departments, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. And so time just went on and on. So obviously the 26, what? what? You just sound so knowledgeable about this. I'm, I'm shocked. Yeah, I don't remember reading any of that. <laughs> oh, no, it's just like, it's it's inevitable. He's read between the lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, <laughs> he, just knows, he knows. It's inevitable. So, the, the so, the, so the 2600 was released in 84, but towards the end, so this was like a good six months later or something. But just due to the complications, and obviously they had to... Although it's it's the same game, it was it had to have different development because it was on a different system. Yeah. So it, it ended up being two fucking years basically yep. before they could release it. So we were playing the fifty two hundred version. So this is the one which was released I read in eighty six. Better. Yeah. Apparently well, they're that's quite a different. very they're subjective substantially word, different. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, the twenty six hundred version must be fucking awful. Because this one isn't particularly great. Well, we'll get to that. Yeah. Okay. Can okay. Have well, I mean it. it, it I mean, it's like any game. It has its pros and its cons. So the game kicks in, and you're uh, you're playing. Well, we assume you're playing as Billy. Yeah, I assume so. Yeah, and yeah. you've got a sword. We've got to mention in the in the movie. In there's the a movie, lot of emphasis. There's a sword that keeps falling off the wall. Yeah, which shouldn't be there. No, that well out of really place. Fit in with the decor of the house. No, no, it's no well out not of place. at all. And it falls not off twice in the half an hour we watched it for. Yeah. Um. So you're Billy with the sword, mm. and you're basically in a room, and you have. Mogwai, you have gremlins, you have water, and you have food. Yes, and the occasional like TV or popcorn machine or something, yeah, something like just like extras. Yeah. So the the mission is to save all the the mogwai, put them in the cage in the top, mm-hmm. and kill the gremlins. Simple as that. But they they've done some quite cool stuff. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's it's like you were saying when we we're playing it. The way they've kind of added the elements of um like the water and the food and stuff. So. So if one of the the Mogwais uh, are always active and they're trying, basically they they will try and seek out food. And when they do, they turn into gremlins, just like in the film. And the same thing, dynamic with water. When gremlins or Mogwai go into water, they multiply and they double. So it, it's it's kind of taken those themes, these kind of like big important themes from the films. And, you know, like for the system at the time, yeah, did it perfectly well. Done it pretty well, yeah. Mm. But at I the mean, same time, it's... It's one of those things, like, although it's it's perfectly good for what it is, it doesn't necessarily throw enough of a dynamic to the game to make it particularly good. Do yeah, you know what we'll, I mean? We'll just say now, we didn't play it for half an hour. We couldn't play it for half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, it was we, very we struggled to it get quite, 20 minutes. quite difficult as well, because there was no judgment yeah, we on only the got up to, <laughs> Well, you start on level three, which is a bit weird. Yeah, yeah. it's not on yeah. night three. Yeah, night yeah. three. But is that because... In the film, does he have Gizmo for two nights before there's a Gremlins? Yes, that would make sense. And then night three we, so we is did where see, the, we did the Gremlins see, kick we off. We did see... We went through we saw one them night. sleep yeah. one or twelve once. times, I can't remember. I think it was just the once, wasn't it? At least when uh, the rest no, of the... No, he slept twice. Gizmo he slept did. once with Gizmo. Giz- yeah. But then the, the... When there were the rest of them, there was... It was yeah. just the one night. But that's, that's what I'm assuming it is. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. paranormal but, activity. But anyway, so you start yes. on night three and we only managed to get up to night nine... Hey. Nine, eight, eight or nine? nine? Yeah, eight, eight or nine. nine. Oh, I mean, I only managed to get to five. I was shit. So basically, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, when you see <laughs> the vast majority of deaths in quick succession, that's me. 
I'll it own was, it. It was, to be fair, I, it was tough. Yeah, it was. I it found was it really challenge, tough. It yeah. challenging. Well, I think I think you two are like quite good at it, to be honest. Like, I I, well, I couldn't get the kind of perception of it. Yeah, it was tough to know where your sword was actually going to go. Yeah, exactly. And like the ty- the thing is, like, it's one of the, it's quite typical with older games, especially like around like you know this period of time, like late eighties, like mid to late eighties games. Um, the responsiveness, it's like it's always there's always like a little bit of delay with everything. Yeah, so when you go to swing the sword, it's like there's just that little it's not just like you press it and it's swung do you know what i mean it's like yeah. it has that little spongy and i i for some reason my brain doesn't work well with that so <laughs> so every time i was doing it I, I was just like my brain was like half a second back so i i struggled with it big time yeah yeah but that was to be honest that was essentially the whole game well this is it, it. was just it's... different levels of that and then after each level you've got mogwai points depending on how many mogwai you saved yes and that was it. So you, <laughs> but there was a weird time bonus thing well, yeah, that just still wasn't explained, and you just don't really understand what it is. And yeah, so the, the basically, like you have a little clock in the bottom, uh, the bottom of the screen, and it's it when when you do like the, when you start at night three, when you're first starting the game, it, it's on five minutes, it seems, on the dot. But this clock counts upwards, so five minute, one second, two second, you know, it's constantly counting up. But then when you complete the level, it's kind of tallied into your score somehow, strangely. I don't really understand how it works. And then time is constantly going back. So eventually, like, that five minutes is going to go back into kind of, like, four minutes and down below. I mean, but I don't really get what purpose it's serving. No. No, it was, it was very weird. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a, that's a strange dynamic anyway. I mean, whether it's, like, some sort of strange objective to get the clock back to a certain point, that already throws up questions because doesn't work in reality <laughs> clocks don't go backwards don't go back. <laughs> and you know doesn't kind of coincide with the movie like it's not like we might as you know the only way we can fix this gremlin problem is by uh you know my dad invented a time travel machine mm-hmm. and traveling back in time because let's be honest if he can't make a fucking juicer or a coffee maker they're going to be fucked when it comes to a time travel machine aren't they what if he can't make a coffee machine or a juicer but he makes a bang up time, time travel machine <laughs> you know what <laughs> He just might, you yeah. know. He just might. He's got that spark in his eye. You know, maybe he just needs the right project. I mean, who could be inspired by the bathroom buddy or th- an egg cracker which could take your fucking fingers off? You know, it's like <laughs> what he really needs to inspire him is a time machine. Yeah. Yeah. His house be Watch full of little monsters. Space. Watch this space. <laughs> Gremlins free. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. He's probably retired by that point. Was there a Gremlins free? I thought there were rumours for one. I, think, no, I thought I think there was only one or two. two. Yeah. I think it's just two. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's one of those things they'll probably, um, uh, what's it called? Like, re... Oh, they'll, yeah, they'll, uh, yeah. Re-hash it, they'll reboot it or whatever. Yeah, reboot doing. it. Like, Should know. we see if there is one? Yeah, yeah, do, do some research. In, in the pipeline. In the pipeline. Yeah. Because yeah. the uh, trailer dropped for Jurassic Park. Oh, no, fucking Jurassic Park. Jumanji. Jumanji. Jurassic Park. Oh, no, well, I don't know see. I can see the similarities. There, were there dinosaurs in Jumanji? Was it just uh, animals? No, I think it's just animals. It was just animals, wasn't it? There's, a, there's, for some reason, there's a line in Jumanji which will always be one of my um, m- most remembered lines in all of film history. Go for it. It's where you know they do the dice roll and it, uh, it's, it's rain and it starts raining inside the house and then I think it's Kirsten Dunst. You know, she was the girl in the film. She goes, "Oh well, it's not that bad. It's not a bad roll because it's just a bit of rain." And a little bit of rain never hurt anyone. And then Robin Williams goes, yeah, but a lot will kill you. And I thought, like, he's kind of right. Yeah. And at the same time, for some reason, it's not like a profound line, but for some reason, it's been a line that's always stayed with me. Really weird. That's so, really uh, weird. update on Gremlins 3 is definitely in the works, according to the film star, Zach Gilligan. Gal- Galligan. 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 So and this was who, in, he played Billy. This article was in uh, December 2016. So uh, not particularly long ago, six Too months ago. ago. Mm. So, um, wow. So Gremlins 3, it, it's, it's apparently happening. Who the funk it, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess... Damn. Yeah, it's a sequel and not a reboot, so... Cool. Hmm. Really? Maybe we'll cool. get a sweet game maybe, to go yeah, with it, lads. Oh my a next god! Next gen, <laughs> next gen Gremlins. PS4 Gremlins. What you have to do? I love it. Like... It's just a remaster. Yeah. Of this. <laughs> it's literally this with a new coat of paint on it. It's gonna be great. That would be fucking sad, wouldn't um, it? 
But I have to say, the, the actual gremlins and the mogwais in the 5200 well, game looks pretty good. The yeah, sprites. it's it's one of the thing, It's good. one of the thing I pointed out to be honest. I said like, consi- and I thought the animation was good. Like you know, when you swung the sword, it's mm. like it's quite yeah. fluid and like it's got like a nice motion to it. It's not particularly clunky. Like and even the walking animation, like you know, it's like as as things go. And considering this, obviously, went he has through... got a bit of swagger to him. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, obviously, this this went through like hell, like you know, development hell. Considering like the animation side of things, like not particularly bad at all. And I would say actually, the sound wasn't too bad. Yeah, like the sound I mean, effects were good, and the music. The music was. Let's be fine. honest. We always fine. we always have it as a point of reference. But a fuck ton better yeah, than Back, back to, the to the Future. future yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, the music was fine. Yeah. I mean, in t- yeah, if you were going to compare this game with Back to the Future, this is a hundred times better. Yeah, I could, yeah I could I'd, I'd agree with that. Yeah. For, even though we didn't manage half an hour, no. at a push, if it was the only thing and, you know, I was forced to sit down and play it, I could play it and I could challenge myself to try to get past level 10 and I could, I could kind of enjoy doing it. Yeah, but I couldn't do that with Back to the Future. Here's here's a thing nah. with the Gremlins game though, um, and it's something maybe we should have like looked at properly. But I don't think it actually kept a high score. I don't. Yeah, it must have. It must have done. I don't think it did. It might not have saved the high score though, because back in like Atari days, if they saved uh, good program, point. you might have just wrote it down in your book or something. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean, good, good point, good point. Because like a lot of Mega like... Drive games and that didn't. Yeah. I mean, like the thing is, is I such a strange concept. Like, wrote it down in your book. <laughs> yeah, like, high score. To play this game, you need a pen and paper. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it was though. Like, like if you go back, me and Luigi played um, what was Second Samurai on the Mega Drive this over guy. Christmas, yeah. and like. Every time we got to a new level, it was like the code, and like Luigi was there scribbling down well, to his phone. Yeah, that, that code. So then true. when we wanted to play it again, true. we just backed in the code that and we got back great. to it away because you couldn't save. No, it's true. I mean, the the thing is, it's like yeah, it's a weird concept. But yeah. they, 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 yeah. I I did always find that strange in the first place. That I mean, it's like there there were plenty of games that didn't kind of maintain high scores just through the game itself. So you did have to kind of keep log for it yourself. But then. In many ways, like it took the fun out of getting a new high score because it's always nice to see like uh, yeah, the, the high top. score yeah, yeah. in like top corner, and it's something you've got to be. Obviously, this is a very like you know a much simpler time in gaming, and beating like you know we're not beating around the bush there. And obviously, like really, your one thing that you could do to kind of continue and have replayability with games is to achieve a better high score. That's, yeah, yeah. that's basically the only yeah, when this you is, can Yeah, when this is your game, your replayability is to beat your high score. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And so, I mean, it's like, when games don't log it, at least like on the screen, like it kind of takes a bit of the magic out of getting a new high score because having to write down your high score, your new high score, in a piece of paper below your previous high score, <laughs> doesn't it make you just think, I've wasted my life? No. Nah. No. Oh, okay. Just because okay. of just me, then is it? <laughs> but it, 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 it makes quite, no difference. I, I think it's quite nice. Like, uh, admittedly, like, never gonna fucking catch on, and it, it's shit. Like, it's so much nicer having it on the screen. But but that uh, it's well, quite, quite a like... nice little bit of nostalgia. Imagine you you are playing Atari back in the day. Yeah. And you come across your your. Atari logbook. Well, this like, is it. 30, yeah. high 30 it. years yeah. on with all your... That would be it's pretty... Like, I mean, I mean that like, is true. And that's nicer than having it on screen because obviously like that can get wiped and, yeah, dated, in and like, it can be in destroyed. Yeah, because in 50 years, know. if I log into my PlayStation account and I see the trophies that I've got from games, I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, I remember playing fucking... <laughs> I don't know, I'm going to look for a game now. <laughs> Far Cry 3. Yeah. Because I've got a platinum in it or whatever. No, it's true enough. Mm. I'm not going to... F- no, it's true. It, 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 it doesn't like, have that lasting... It, like, whereas if, yeah. you, if you opened up your uh, copy of San Andreas for the PS2 and you've got your cheat book in there... I yeah. still do. I oh, still man, do. I yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that there guide, you go. the Look, San Andreas it's guide. True. Yeah. That's amazing. Look at that reaction compared to going online looking at your trophy no, it's list. true. It's true. Like, it's, it's, it's something... There's something like... Well, it's real, isn't it? It's warm and it's yeah. real and, you know, it's like it's there, it's physical, you can touch it, you can feel it, it exists. And, yeah, I get that. I get that. So, actually, like, yeah... I don't. I don't know quite where I was trying to go with it, with my main point. Because you're I, basically I, saying Atari's bad because it's not advanced enough, even though the times weren't advanced enough in I th- video I games. I think it's anyway. just like, yeah. I mean, it's just like I, I. It's more the fact that I feel 
I feel bad that I think that this game could have been potentially a lot more. And I think given Atari's previous really fucking shit business decisions in which led to their own downfall, and it's totally their own responsibility, like, there's all the potential that the games they could have made after, like, E.T. and whatnot could have been much more groundbreaking, potentially. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. there could have been something a lot more to these games. Mm. And obviously, we are judging it through through the eyes of people who didn't, you know, necessarily live at that time. And also, you know, we're in not a necessarily. Much, no, not, not necessarily. <laughs> well, no. you know, we don't know how the spirit works, but like physically we weren't there. <laughs> we weren't physically playing games. We were playing games with God, man. <laughs> we were playing games up there. Actually, no, we weren't. Playing games in the ether. In the ether. We were in the ether. But we weren't physically playing Gremlins. Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You know yeah, what I'm man. Saying. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so, I totally get it. Yeah, cool. So, but like at, <laughs> like at the same time, like, you know, I am I just think like, you know, there, there could have been so much more to this. Yeah, I agree. There, should, there could have been a lot more to it. And it was uh, overall pretty boring. It was. Well, the fact that we couldn't like, you know. Someone just turned up at my house. You might have heard that. <laughs> yeah. Sorry if you did. But um, yeah, no. So I mean, it's 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 more a shame in my eyes than anything else, to be honest. Especially considering like Gremlins is like like I said earlier, like it's a it's a movie franchise that I kind of grew up with due to having older brothers, and it was a real kind of like Christmas thing. Like every single year, we'd watch it. It was a real you know. Yeah, well, it's it's a proper cult classic. It yeah, is, like, it's like Goonies and yeah, and all yeah, that. So exactly. You know, something that kind of means a lot to a lot of people from that generation so yeah yeah it would have been nice to have a game worthy Which, of that yeah exactly that's Which exactly it, it man um so should we get round to it then is it a cash grab or not yeah mm. is gremlins for the oh. atari 5200 oh a cash grab well I'll, I'll i'll go first um i would say yes um because in its in its truest heart of hearts uh when it was initially going to be released it's meant to be released alongside the film. Mm-hmm. And that's always a bit of an indication that this is a cash grab because it's trying to kind of quickly get in on yeah, the well, film at the, the height of its popu- yeah. Yeah. at the height of its popularity. And it's there to just, you know, get out there, same time as the film, get a huge amount of like, you know, flux from the kind of wave of the movie and hopefully make a buck out of it. Yep. I mean, obviously it didn't pan out that way, and I don't think it was you know, the game was particularly successful, at least not in comparison to the film. But I do think, in its intention, it was a cash grab, and it is a cash grab. Yeah, I, so that's my two two cents. I completely agree. Mm. Boom, me too. Boom. But that's <laughs> not to say. Okay, so as much as yeah, it, it's a cash grab, and mm. it's not the best game in the world. No, it's not the worst. Oh no, definitely no, no, not. No, no, it's not the worst. It's you know, like I say, the music's pretty good. Yeah. So some of the um animations. the animations really yeah. good, like nice and fluid, and there is that kind of potential replayability trying to get your high score and, and you know, and it's simple enough to Yeah. It's no. like Snake. Do you, do you know yeah. Snake on the Nokia? Really simple ass game that you will just play over and over again. It's yeah, kind it's of got that, that it's got that element to it. To it. Yeah. 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 It's simple enough that you can just chuck it on and play, play it. it and yes. Then, Yes. And then turn it off and be done with it. Yeah, yeah exactly. All right, so with that being said, mm-hmm. should, we, should we have a quick chat about our... Uh, our we've named it Cool Wall. For the now. Cool Wall. Cool Wall. Cool Wall. Cool wall. Cool I've not wall. seen the Cool Wall. No, no you haven't seen the, the Cool time, Wall. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. But basically, this is our version of the Top Gear Cool Wall. Yes. And we've named it Cool Wall. Yeah, I'm really hoping... We should probably think <laughs> I'm really hoping there's name. no like creative infringement going on right yeah. now. Let's we call think it a better name. Uh, the uh, the cool notepad. Cool notepad. That sounds crap. No, it's it does sound a cool little wall. bit shit. I don't know. Because uh, the thing is, cool. We, we can we can work something out later anyway. But um, so this is the list of the games we played so far in order of how what? good they are. Yeah. And replayability. Yes. So just to recap of what we've got so far we've got back to the future for the nez yep street fighter the movie the game for the playstation one yep hercules for the playstation love one. it little nicky for game boy color mm-hmm. goosebumps attack of the mutant for pc mm-hmm. the crow for playstation one. Oh god gold knife n64 yeah moonwalker for the mega drive awesome and gremlins for the atari 5200 yes that's our list of games so far yes 
Right, looking at this list, lads, would you agree from top to bottom with it so far? Yeah, so just, just to point out, we I'm not going to go through every single one, but at the moment, uh, the, the top of our list is Goldeneye um, as the best game we've played so far uh, in comparison to the movies, and the least decent is The Crow, which will come as no surprise to anyone who has played The Crow. Or watch the YouTube <laughs> video of The Crow. Even, yeah. even Back to the Future was more fun. Yes, so, which is saying something. Yeah, so we'll go through it. So at the top is Goldeneye. Number two yes. is Hercules. Yeah, definitely good choice. Number three is Goosebumps. Number four is Street Fighter, the movie, the game. Number five is Moonwalker. Mm-hmm. Number six is Little Nicky. Seven, Back to the Future. Eight, The Crow. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to say potentially Back to the Future should be at the bottom of that because I, I, I didn't get to play The Crow, but oh. I did watch it and I thought I could have some enjoyment out of this game. The thing is, when we played, when we were deciding this, we did say. We had a hell of a lot more laughter out of the crow than we did Back to the Future. An insane amount, yeah. So I, I could easily be swayed. But the, but at the same time, it's you you would be tempted for the bad. fact that that it's also it's a more advanced game in terms yeah, of like it's it's more pleasing to look at. If you look, look at, at what else there we, was on the PS One, I mean, look, two of those games are on PS One at the top there. Yeah. You know when you've got things like Crash Bandicoot. Uh, yeah, or I mean it's, like, it's 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 or it, Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. And then you play the crow. But like Nez, <laughs> Nez like yeah had like Mega Man and like uh, Super Mario Bros and all that. True, 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 true. But I mean, uh, I mean, in, sure, I mean there's in, nothing in, like in pushing compa- the limits. In like there was comparison to the games at the time, you know, in, uh, for both games, I would say the Crow is probably the worse off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, there's Looking not much the in it. Well. But if you were going to stick a gun to my head and you say, choose which one you're going to play now, I'm going to play the crow. Yeah, I yeah, think I would as well. Valid. Because I'd rather well, get shot than the listen to the Back to the Future <laughs> music again. <laughs> should, we, uh, should we call the list Put a Gun to My Head? <laughs> no, not really, because you would not need to put a gun to my head. <laughs> the to put a gun to my head more. Golden Eye. <laughs> um, oh, would well, you want to leave it like that? Or do you yeah, keep it as the cool one. I like that. Leave it like that, because I can see where you're coming from. Okay, so where do you want to put gremlins amongst that lot? I know where I want to put it. Um, Go on, Adam. Again, hard for me because I didn't didn't get to play Moonwalker. Though I did play it as a when I was younger, and I yeah. actually quite enjoyed Moonwalker. Yeah. Um, so I would probably and I've played Little Nicky before, and that I hated. <laughs> so um, I'm going to stick it above Little Nicky and under Moonwalker. Exactly what That's I was exactly thinking. What I was gonna yeah, say. we all did the same <laughs> thing. All did the same thing. Perfect. So Gremlins comes in in what's that seventh position, uh, sixth Six. position, Six. Six out of nine. Wow! So it's it's on the lower threshold of the games we've played so far, but at the same time, it's still a ways off being one of the worst. It's doing yeah. Pre- yeah, it's still doing pretty well. So Gremlin Gremlins is kind of sitting in quite an average place in many in many regards, to yeah. be honest. But I would say you know that's on the game side of it uh, side of things definitely, but. Um, as a movie, I, I fucking love it. Yeah. And I will continue to. Yeah, we're not going to be rating the movies because that's just... Ridiculous. We only watch for half an hour. You can't... No. Yeah. No, that's fair enough. Yeah. Most of these games, you can play half an hour and you get a good gist of what it is. Most of these games, you can just play <laughs> five half minutes. Half yeah. Five Most minutes will do. Half an hour is a struggle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah. So, that's, that's that then. So, Gremlins is in the cash, cash grab, grab pile. Damn. Well, on that note, um, thank you for listening. And yeah. uh, like, follow us if you're listening on SoundCloud. Subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Leave a comment, all of that jazz. And we'll see you in the next one. Let us know anything you want us to do. We've yeah. got something planned for next week. Ooh. Suggestions, Ooh, please. Which I'm looking forward to. Oh, yeah, it's going to be good fun. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not giving anything away. Cannot wait. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, we'll be back for a number 10 special. Damn. Oh, 10 already, eh? Bloody hell. That went quick. That's 10 weeks, you know. I know. Fucking hell. Fucking Madden. hell. Until next time, then, guys. Works. Yeah, 10 weeks yeah. from holiday. Yeah, so it's, it's weekly, isn't it? Oh, shit. 10 weeks. Whew. Holy shit. So, farewell. We'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Ciao.